Hi everyone. So welcome to a important session on the corridor method, which is again, you know, applicable only in the US gap and is again a matter of accounting rather than valuation. Well, an imperative is that you look at these videos in exactly the same order in which they are being recorded and, you know, they're being developed so that there is a proper chain in which, you know, you are able to kind of, uh, you know, understand the concept because the connectivity is extremely critical. So um, here what we are saying is that the corridor method is a specific method that is used to transfer the value from OCI to income statement. Now, there are two questions on, on this slide. One, when do you apply this method? And second, how do you apply this method? So how has always been easier? It's always the when which is more critical. Well, in the US gap, there are certain changes made by actuarials, which may be a gain or a loss, which gets parked in OCI. They may be because of liability, they may be because of assets. Let me bring the numbers. So far, the example that we've been using, 11340 has been the loss because of liability parked in OCI, and 63 has been the difference between the actual versus the expected return, which is again parked in OCI because of AGL. So some total of that is 11403 parked in OCI under the name of AGL. There is another value parked in OCI, but this is not AGL, which is the management changes. And there is a simple, simpler amortization, which is just on the basis of remaining service life. And the corridor method is not going to apply there. You have to understand that corridor method gets applied only to the value, which is under the name AGL. OCI is a broader number. OCI is a broader umbrella in which you will find different things. Let's not amortize everything that is lying in OCI. It's only the AGL, which is lying in OCI that needs to be under you know, amortized. So that's the answer to when. How is the number that, you know, you have to just understand with help of an example. And I'm going to, you know, kind of take that example, continuing the same, uh, you know, case that we have been following so far. So the total AGL, this was because of the liability. And this was again, a loss because of the asset could be plus or a minus. So, you know, let's not generalize it here. And so there is a total loss of 11403, which is lying in AGL pending amortization under OCI. So the question is, what is and how much will you amortize for the sixth year? Well, the answer is nil. And again, the explanation for that is that any amortization is going to start from the next year compared to the time zone that it has come up. So both of these numbers, 11403, have come up towards the end of the sixth year. So amortization of these values will happen in the seventh year. Let's just understand how would this be amortized. So I'm going to talk about the seventh year now. And this is the seventh year. Okay, for the seventh year, the AGL was 11403. Now for the seventh year, if I'm doing the accounting, I'm standing here. So I'm going to look at the opening values of my PBO and plan assets. So 6567 or 23639. By the way, these were the closing values of sixth year. But now I'm talking about the seventh year. So this becomes the opening. Whichever is the higher so I select the higher of the two, 639. I take a 10% of that, 2363.9, or let me round it off to 64. This becomes my materiality limit. By materiality limit, what I mean is, I'm going to create a tumbler called as OCI. And I'm going to mark the size of this tumbler equal to this materiality limit. And this tumbler is applicable only for seventh year. The size of the tumbler is going to change because every year the opening values are going to be different. So this is a relative calculation that you're doing. The size of the tumbler is not same for all years. I'm going to pour down the total value lying in AGL, which is 11403, out of which 2364 is going to be absorbed by the tumbler 
and an excess of whatever is a delta between the two so essentially 1 1 4 0 3 minus 2 3 6 4 the delta is 9 0 3 9 this is the excess that you will see being spilled over this excess is part of the value that came in your life at t6 this needs to be amortized over the remaining service life which according to the current case is two years so 9039 divided by 2 4 5 let's say round it off to 2 0 this is the per annum amortization for the seventh year that you will see what is a is equal to l plus c that's the same thing so there's a loss that has been parked in oci so the oci is going to go up and p and l is going to come down 4520 so what i'm basically trying to say is if you're going to make a pension expense for the seventh year this amortization here this amortization here that you're going to see is for your uh you know this is uh two whatever that number that we have just come, came out with uh, of 4520 okay so again to answer the impact on the seventh year's p and l is going to be that there is an added expense of 4520 that will enter the p and l what is the impact on the total asset nil total equity nil total liability nil because there is a movement only between p and l and oci okay that's all so we read through that slide basically says that whenever you have to amortize take the opening balances of pbo or plan assets select the one which is higher take 10 percent of the higher value two three four zero and this is the maximum materiality limit available up to which we will not have any problem let the value keep on lying in oci but any excess one one four zero three less the corridor value which is 9039 is going to be amortized over the remaining service life which in this case is let's say two years now again you know you must be wondering what if the actuarial would have made a change in the beginning of the sixth year then what would have happened now in that case if the actuarial would have made a change at the beginning of the f year which means and I'm just assuming that the number is going to be same and I am doing the accounting for the sixth year then again I would have taken the opening balances of plan assets and the plan liabilities would have selected higher of the two have taken the 10 percent which is 563 would have created a tumbler to the extent of 562.4 would have poured in this value now I'm doing the accounting for sixth year and this is again a hypothetical example that I'm taking how much would have been the excess this time the excess would have been much higher so 11,403 the total unamortized value minus the corridor available the excess would have been 10,841 and the remaining life in this case would have been three years divided by three so the total amount to be amortized is three six one let's say four i'm just rounding it off this would have been amortized actuarial gains and losses okay which in this case okay the amortized actuarial gains and losses which okay so i think i, th I think while you're doing that i just kind of you know did, did the other way around and uh, it should be the reverse so out of this value i would have to amortize a number of you know 3614 and a number of let's say 3614 that will arise in the PNL so what else you know will it make a difference into let me just go back the difference would have come up now watch out for the gray font this the difference would have come up so some value from OCI would be transferred to the income statement 
the total again would have remained same so I would reduce this number here and I would increase some number here by let's say 4514 whatever is the number you know that I've been able to get okay so so, so that's how